Okay, so thank you very much for coming, and I'd just like to introduce Claire Reid. Thanks, Damon, and thank you to all of you for coming. I think it's really impressive, given that it's January and it's a political meeting, um, and I'd love to think you're all here specifically just to meet me, but I think it might be something to do with the fact that we have Patrick Harvey here. And I hope you're looking forward to giving both of us a grilling later. And um, I'm sure Patrick will be able to help out with anything that has me stumped. Um, so first, I thought I'd just talk a little bit about why I chose to stand for the Scottish Green Party. So I hope that most of you will know that the Scottish Greens campaign for a fair, just and sustainable Scotland. And I think a lot of people connect that word sustainability with the Green Party. But I think people don't always realise that for the Green Party, a society that is not socially and economically just can never be sustainable. And that's really what is at the heart of so many Green Party policies, creating a fair and just society. It seems at the moment that the mass media is intent on having us believe that the only road we can go down is so-called austerity. And our main political parties are really kind of driving this agenda. Um, and they seem to lack the political will and the ambition to question the ideology of austerity. And it is an ideology. Why are we seeking to punish some of the most vulnerable people in our society for the mistakes of those who have the most power, who have the most wealth, and crucially, who had the most responsibility for the financial crisis? School dinner ladies and care workers and small businesses did not create the financial crisis. Yet the reality is they're paying the price in higher borrowing costs, in homes and businesses lost, and in wages cut. And I think it's really unacceptable that we don't take the opportunity to question this. When you see that some of the richest people in our society have had tax cuts and the bankers have still had large bonuses, then it's not difficult to see who has paid and who has gained in an unfair and unjust system which is favoured by, by the Tories and Labour. Now, while our main political parties are seeking to shore up the very economic system that has failed us time and time again, the Scottish Green Party has created a workable, comprehensive economic plan mm -hmm. that can take us away from austerity, away from inequality, away from food banks in the seventh richest country in the world, a plan that can create that fair, just and sustainable Scotland that we want to see. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I know Patrick's going to speak about that later. But I did want to mention just one key policy, which is a citizen's income. Now, that's not a policy exclusive to the Scottish Green Party because it's been favoured by some certain politicians and economists throughout the ages and from across the political spectrum. It's an unconditional, non-withdrawable payment made to each individual as a right of citizenship. It's non-means tested, so it's equal for everyone, and it's sufficient to cover an individual's most basic needs. Crucially, it is affordable, and it would end the stigma and the bureaucracy of the benefit system, which has become so complex over the years. It would create an end to that in-work poverty trap, the benefits trap, and it would allow people to be supported to study, to look for work that suits them, and it would crucially recognise the value of all the non-paid work that goes on in our society, people who care for relatives or for children. And it would also allow people to have that kind of financial safety net should they wish to create their own local business. It could help us create a really vibrant local economy, which is what we need. And that's another thing that's really important to the Scottish Green Party, which is localism and supporting small local businesses. Um, the Scottish Green Party is currently the only party who is actually campaigning against the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, or TTIP, as you've probably heard it called. Now, this agreement would allow multinational corporations to bypass laws which protect the environment, consumer and workers' rights, and also food safety standards. It might allow multinational corporations to sue governments in private and secret courts for decisions made that harm their profits. And other parties are currently either supporting TTIP or they're undecided by it. 
but the Scottish Green Party is campaigning with the Green Party of England and Wales to have this agreement put to the side so that we don't need to be controlled by multinational corporations and there's some kind of fairness in the system. And we are making great progress with that. I think if anyone's been following, there was some progress made this week on the investor to say dispute settlement, which is the bit about suing in private courts. So it's really clear to me how much the Scottish Green Party stands out nationally. Um, but I'd also like to talk about some of the key local issues that we're addressing in this campaign. So we're saying yes to warm homes and an end to fuel poverty. I know myself how difficult it is to afford heating at this time of year, especially if you live in a home like mine, which you can't have um, cavity wall insulation. And it's unacceptable that people in our community are pushed further into poverty, trying to pay for heat, which then escapes out of their house. It's like burning money, and I don't think any of us feel like we can afford to burn money at the moment. Now, the council have done a fantastic job with the Ravenscraig flats, um, but as a councillor, I would push to see this work replicated right across the board. Three blocks of flats is a great start, but it's not enough by itself. And also, sound insulation is really important for people's enjoyments of their homes, particularly if you live in flats. That's what most people want, a warm and a peaceful environment. And as a councillor, I would push for both things to be considered when any work is undertaken. We're saying yes to a living wage for all. Now, nationally, the Scottish Green Party campaigned for a £10 minimum wage, which is really important because work has to be a way out of poverty. And for so many people, it's not at the moment. Now, locally, we would be focusing on encouraging all businesses in the area to pay the living wage. And at the moment in our community, there's a lot of small businesses that are choosing to pay the living wage. And there's sometimes bigger businesses where, which are actually paying the minimum wage. And as a councillor, I would like to be able to work with businesses in the community to try and support them to move towards paying the living wage. There's also more the council can do. It can make paying the living wage a condition of its grants and also enshrine it into their procurement policy for any external contractors. And I think that's very important. The council needs to lead the way on that. We're saying yes to a fairer alternative to council tax and an end to the cuts. I don't really know anyone in Fife at the moment who isn't very concerned about the cuts that are coming to Fife Council's budget. And I want to reiterate that the Scottish Green Party is firmly opposed to austerity. But while we're working within this system, then you, you need to have solutions. And the Scottish Green Party does have an alternative idea to the council tax, which would be much more fair. This would be a land value tax, and it would also replace business rates. It's a very progressive tax. It stimulates local economies. It doesn't penalise good things like business and building and work. And it also would deter speculation on land. Land value taxes are much easier to collect. They're harder to avoid, and it would simplify the whole system. Crucially, under a land value tax, most of us would pay less, but the people who can most afford to pay would contribute the most, which is fair. A land value tax would also help this problem of derelict land, and it's a huge issue in Kirkcaldy East. It just simply wouldn't be economically viable for landowners to hold on to land in the hope that once the council improves the area in some way, that land will then be worth more. Um, Fife Council, I think, in terms of planning in Kirkcaldy East, needs to start moving beyond discussion and actually taking action on a number of sites, particularly the Victoria Road corridor. And I also think it's important that the council really commits to building communities and not just houses so that green spaces, play spaces and public amenities are at the heart of planning rather than sometimes as a bit of a tick box exercise. Um, and I think, of course, any new homes that are built, they must be built to the highest energy efficiency standard. And that's incredibly important in Kirkcaldy East. We're saying yes to boosting the local economy and local jobs. I think it's a key part of a local councillor's role is to promote the local economy. And Fife Council are doing great work with Kirkcaldy for All and Kirkcaldy's ambitions. But I also think that we could learn from community-led initiatives. I'd really like to work with small businesses and organisations like Kirkcaldy for All to create a local shopping campaign following the brilliant example of Totally Locally in Burnt Island, which was really successful and came from the community. I think Fife Council are realising that communities need to be empowered. 
but they also need to be supported. And we can't just rely on the third sector to do work without support. We're saying yes to better rent rights for private tenants. The Scottish Green Party are supporting the Rent Rights campaign, which some of you may have heard of. It's a national campaign at the moment, which is saying that rent should be increasing only with, in line with inflation. Having a home is a really basic human right, and so many people are struggling right now with the spiralling costs of rent. We're also campaigning for assured tenancies so that people can stay in their homes for more than six months at a time. And that would also write in a lot more stability to the system, which would actually be beneficial for landlords as well as tenants. These are all things that we say yes to, but we have one very clear no message in this campaign, and that is no to fracking and unconventional gas extraction. These technologies are forms of what's been deemed extreme energy, and it's basically a last ditch attempt by oil and gas companies to eke out some profits from resources which are ever more difficult and dangerous to extract. Some of these technologies involve setting fire to coal seams underground. Some of them involve pumping gallons of water and a cocktail of chemicals into the ground to force out the gas. Now, in the US and Australia, when these technologies have been used, water supplies have become contaminated. Um, vast ways of the countryside have become industrialised. Air pollution has increased, and crucially to me, local people feel that they're getting ill because of these technologies. And there are a lot of health campaigners warning that we simply do not have enough information about these technologies to say that they are safe. We really need people on the council that understand these issues and that are willing to speak up and speak out for our community. Fife is famous for its coast, and extreme energy would pollute and industrialise it. Fife Council has done all this fantastic work promoting our coastal tourist industry, and yet extreme energy could destroy that industry. It will affect everything from Ravenscraig to Dyser, all the way out to Ely, across the Forth to Portobello and Musselburgh, and inland, anywhere there was coal is at risk of fracking. So that's virtually all of Kirkcaldy East and beyond. Now, again, this is something that we've, we've made slight progress on this week, if anyone's seen. It's now going to be a Scottish decision whether companies are allowed to frack under your home without permission. Now, at the moment, the Green Party and the Scottish Green Party are the only parties who are actively campaigning against fracking and extreme energy. And we're really committed to helping the other parties understand the consequences of these technologies so we can have a moratorium on fracking. And again, that's now particularly important because it's going to be a Scottish decision. Finally, I've talked quite a lot about national issues and local issues as well, but I've not talked specifically about me. And certainly when I'm voting in a local council election, I'm thinking about the party, but I'm also thinking about the person. So there's leaflets on all the seats, and some of you have hopefully had leaflets through your door. So you know a little bit about me. Um, I'm the education manager at the Ecology Centre, which is a social and environmental charity based in Kinghorn and working with communities throughout Fife. So I'm really lucky. I get to work with children of all ages right across uh, Fife. And I specialise in providing the centre's nature therapy programmes, which basically use nature and the outdoors as a therapeutic tool to help children that are struggling. Um, I also work as an autism therapist, and I'm finishing my degree in learning difficulties this year. Um, and to me, um, I think I'm a good listener, and I think that's really important and sometimes an undervalued quality in a counsellor. You have to be able to talk to do things like this, yes, but day to day doing your job, I think it's really important that you can listen. Um, and if I were elected, I would be committed to holding regular surgeries in the community. <clears throat> And I certainly wouldn't have a highly paid job out of the area taking up my time and my commitment. And I also have no plans to move to Austria anytime soon for people in Kirkcaldy East. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, if you're elected, you're elected to work for the people in the ward. And if I were to be elected, I would be Fife Council's first Green Party councillor. And I would really relish that responsibility and do my very best for the people of Kirkcaldy East. I think electing someone from a party which isn't yet represented on Fife Council, but is experiencing a surge in membership across Scotland and across the UK, 
could really bring a different energy and a different perspective to the council. While our main political parties have been in power, the gap between rich and poor has increased. And the boom and bust economics that we were promised would end continue, and the political parties continue to support that system. And meanwhile, the most vulnerable people in our communities are forced to choose between eating and heating. Things need to change, and more of the same isn't going to work. The Scottish Green Party have a plan to create that fair, just and sustainable Scotland. A society without a landscape scarred by fracking, without the corporate greed of TTIP, where local people and local communities are actually at the heart of decision making. But if we want that change, we need to make a change. And I think that needs to start happening at local government as well as national government. And that's why I'm asking you to choose something and somebody different this time, to vote for me and to vote Green. Thank you.